What's going on, everybody? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. With BlizzCon behind us and Overwatch 2 in front of us, I thought it was a good time to assess where the game's at and where it's going. You may be surprised to find that they've actually sprinkled clues to prove that we've already been on the Overwatch 2 path. Sounds tricky, I'll explain. And the short answer is, of course, if you've never played Overwatch before, yeah, of course. I think Overwatch is the best multiplayer game ever made. So of course, jump into it. But for current players or returning players, the criticism might be elevated a little bit, especially with some of us feeling that they abandoned Overwatch 1. But is that actually fair? Let's break it down. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Audible, which is one of the easiest recommendations I could ever make because I've been a subscriber since 2012 nine years and counting. I love Audible and I think you will too. And as a gamer, listening to high quality content while playing a great video game, really there's nothing better. They've got thousands of titles and I assure you that something will be right for you. They've got everything. And what you do is you sign up with Audible and get one credit for every month that can be used on anything and then it'll stay in your library forever. But on top of that, you'll also get access to the Audible Plus catalog, which also includes thousands of free audiobooks, original entertainment, and much, much more. And all of this is easily stored and managed through the Audible app, which I have on all my devices. So I can be listening no matter what I'm doing. Nobody tell my wife I may have an earbud in while we're watching that corny rom-com she's making me sit through. What interests me most is cutting edge controversial ideas that make you think outside the box. So my audiobook recommendation fits exactly that. It's The Upside of Stress by Kelly McGonigal, because it's a great reminder on how to handle the biological realities of stress, but turn them into a positive a force for your life. We all know that stress has damaging effects, but the truth is that it's also a biological mechanism to tell you to show up for something you care about. Right now, click the link in the description to start your 30-day free trial with Audible. Head on over to audible.com forward slash your overwatch. That's audible.com forward slash your overwatch. Don't have another boring second of your life. Come on, you know you want this. So let's tackle the first problem. Is Overwatch a dead game? I think Blizzard really dropped the ball with the messaging on this and doesn't take enough aims to accurately describe what they're doing or what their plans are. I mean, this is the same company that struggled to communicate that they were developing what possibly is the most ambitious game I've ever seen with Overwatch 2. In 2019, everyone was confused what they meant, but by 2021's BlizzCon, we're like, oh yeah, that's like five games in one, or you know, maybe more like three or something, but it's definitely an ambitious game that blows other PvE games out of the water as far as I'm concerned. So much so that I think Overwatch 2 is going to be game of the year. But did they neglect Overwatch 1 to do it? Sort of. You see, for years, Blizzard had hyped up how important heroes are to Overwatch. Not only that, did they continuously talk about the fact that they have lots of heroes in development, they're always prototyping heroes, 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 heroes. And then one day they decided, no more heroes. The world could always use more heroes, but we're not going to be making any more for Overwatch 1. We're going to switch development into Overwatch 2, which which, by the way, might be the best decision for everyone, possibly, but it's pretty disingenuous of them to say that they're not pulling resources from one strategy to put it into another, even if it's the best thing for us. It's hard to swallow that pill. So it was sad to find out that they're not reversing that. They think it's best that they full steam ahead towards Overwatch 2. But that doesn't exactly mean that we're being neglected in Overwatch 1. Yes, we're not getting new heroes, but we have seen a lot of quality of life improvements, as well as a lot of things I think you would have already classified as Overwatch 2 content. You see, I don't think the devs actually see it as working on two different games. It's a simultaneous development structure. More energy is on the PvE, I think, that's obvious. But for the PvP side of things, it's going hand in hand. And as Jeff said in the IGN interview, as they develop new things for PvP, as long as it's going to fit in the live game, they'll put it in. You use the priority pass as an example, but I think there's way more stuff than that. Especially a lot of things I've been scratching my head over for the past year, like, why are they doing this now? What does this have to do with anything? Why are they balancing this? Why were they reworking that? All of it makes sense under this new philosophy of the simultaneous development. Let me give you a great example that I think just nails this. In the Overwatch 2 sneak peek, they showed a clip of their new recoil screen shake thing for Soldier 76. 
In this clip, we saw him have the old model of spread, not recoil. So that makes this like six months old, that they recorded that to put into BlizzCon way later. But did we even wait to get that? I understand they're gonna do more with it in Overwatch 2, but if you remember, Soldier, when he got his recoil rework, did have a screen shake problem. And despite them hyping it up in Overwatch 2, it actually was a bit over the top and they actually had to tune it down. But this is sort of what I mean. When we see things that look out of the blue to be reworked, that don't really have any balance consideration and look to be more like quality of life or structural to how the hero works, I think you can label that as an Overwatch 2 improvement that they're working on simultaneously because the new Soldier barely changed his balance but really did change his feel and likely was done in combination with them working on these other features that are intended for overwatch 2 in the long term you see what i mean and the more things you add up the more clear this picture becomes basically all the changes they've done to tanks almost all of them i think fit more in the overwatch 2 philosophy of where they're trying to take the game reinhardt already plays similar to how the overwatch 2 rework rein does he's just a more extreme version but they've already reduced his shield, increased his damage, gave him 550 health. And speaking of health, other tanks like Winston, D.Va, they've got more armor. Orisa's Fortify, denying headshot damage again, makes more sense in the philosophy that tanks are going to be this brawler class. I would argue then Reaper's rework tries to enable that again to try to let damage be damage and let tanks be tanks. We don't have all the Overwatch 2 improvements per se, but the playstyle of Reaper now puts him in those positions that are more quintessential damage rather than tanks being deathly afraid of him, right? That philosophy is already in place into the live game, and it's what they're aiming at to eventually reach in Overwatch 2, but we're being dragged along for the ride as we go down that road, and it seems to be a good road, to be honest. A lot of those things sound very promising. Back in October, we made a video that Blizzard finally fixed Overwatch, Seagull made a similar one. A lot of community members were clamoring the balanced state of the game then. A few rocky steps along the way, but it's since rebounded and leveled out now again, where I really like this patch that we're on now. Jake tweeted this out as well, saying the balance is pretty good. And I think that has come from the effect of toning down the outliers of the meta. Wrecking Ball got a few nerfs, Echo got a few nerfs, and they weren't overly heavy handed, but enough to put them in line with the other heroes in their role. And now that tanks feel a bit tankier, things feel a bit fairer than they were just a couple patches ago. It's about as good as you can expect Overwatch to ever get balance wise in terms of fun and cool things being incentivized. And I think a lot of that is on the arc of what they're doing for Overwatch 2, right? I think we got to give those benefits that I'm feeling for Overwatch 1 right now some credit towards their focus towards Overwatch 2. Even if we're not maxing out how much content we could get for the PvP game, I still think there's a lot of cool things on the way. Not just the big overhauls with the sequel coming out, but along the way to it. We know Blizzard hates to try to promise anything ahead of time, but as he said, if they have something that's ready, that will work in the live game, we can expect it to come. So as they work towards Overwatch 2 for the next year or so, I'd expect one to three improvements to the live game that are similar in scope to the Priority Pass, for example. And I had to edit this section into this part of the video because a recent GameSpot interview with Jeff Kaplan confirms my assumptions in this regard, which makes this a little bit frustrating that the devs don't really communicate this very well. But look at this quote, without overpromising anything, those aren't the only ideas on the list for the future. He says they're not just going to do balance updates and experimental cards. We do have content planned, and while it might not be the content like a new hero, which we know players want, there's a lot of cool things that I think will keep the game fresh. Some things players might expect, some things they don't even know are on the radar, so I think it's going to be a good year. And listen, if Jeff is this optimistic, I think we should be optimistic too, because what I think most of us are frustrated by is that it seems like they're leaning on these little mini events where you get a skin for nine wins as replacements for content. I don't think we see it that way, but I think Jeff is really opening the door to our imagination of what could be coming to 
Overwatch 1 before Overwatch 2. And to be honest, as a competitive player, those are the things I care about the most. The average player probably wants heroes the most. And you'll have to let me know in the comment section down below, what do you value the most? If they were to pick one thing that they could put into Overwatch 1 that they don't need a new engine for and it isn't a new hero, what would it be? I thought to myself, what do I care about the most? And I made a quick list. Weekend tournament mode, a ranked quick play overhaul, Competitive players have been begging for a huge scoreboard and stats rework. We deserve way more depth in that. And other things in general that I want is like map vetoes or a way of selecting maps, which they've already said is coming for Overwatch 2. And then on top of that, competitive format changes. That's my list, which is to say, I don't take too much to please, honestly. Despite being very critical about a lot of things, I don't feel the need to complain too much because I have such faith in this direction we're going, having seen the evidence of where we've been and what they're aiming at. All's left to do really is wait. The future looks bright in that regard. So that was a kind of general overview of the road we're on towards Overwatch 2. Now I want to take a step back and look at the previous accomplishments of the dev team in these recent features. The primary one I'm going to say is the state of quick play, which all of my content creator friends seem to be finally in agreement with me that it is the best version of the game. I don't want to get too far in depth with the rank mode thing here today, but as long as you don't tie your enjoyment of Overwatch to the ranked experience, which needs serious work, you can really see the beauty that this game has and have a great time no matter what hero you want to play. And I think the priority pass ensured that that was going to be the case. Roll queue and decent balancing. And now the priority pass has a three pronged approach to make the quick play experience really good. Learn how to play heroes you like. The MMR of the matchmaking is fairly fair. And frankly, perhaps too much of the time, the games are more competitive than they can feel in ranked, while also not being punishing because there's nothing to lose if you do lose. You can just have fun with the mechanics of the game. And I think if you have that attitude, it's really hard to play quick play and hate Overwatch, unless you weren't gonna like it to begin with. Because the truth is Overwatch only really breaks down when players are tryharding so much that they're using the meta compositions and exploiting the most broken tactics. But in quick play, it's not uncommon to see two players emote against each other when their last one's alive or try to get some of their favorite heroes to work, even if the meta option would be more oppressive. This makes for the gameplay to flow properly in Overwatch, where you feel that if you need to swap to something to deal with a problem, you can. There's no SR limit for playing with friends. And now with the priority pass feature, you can get into games really quickly when flexing very easily get priority passes and then guarantee a moderate DPS or support queue if you ever want to mix up your gameplay. And the ratio for that is very generous, I might add. So if you hate tanking and want to do it the minimum amount of time, I still think you're going to find that since you get six to one priority pass to flex queue, I mean, that's a great ratio to even out all the queue times of the community. So I think it was a big improvement that doesn't really get the clout that it deserves. Now, I want them to expand on quick play, but I'll leave that for my separate video on that subject. And while we're on the casual side of the game, I want to add that I don't think it's very well publicized how much better the workshop just keeps on getting. It's hard for me to track or even know what they're talking about when they say they're adding a long list of features to it, but they keep building on the foundation that the workshop has set and allowing for more and more creativity and complexity and I really feel that the workshop is reaching that critical mass where it's like an incredibly reliable experience in its own right. Earlier on, it felt like you could see the potential, but the community maybe didn't really have the tools to reach their vision. But over a long process of communication between the player community who are trying to make modes and the developers themselves adding more tool sets, it's getting better and better and better. The TLDR version of this is that anytime I see a mode or actually try one that is renowned for being a decent one, I'm pleasantly surprised. This isn't an area of expertise for me, and I'm trying to spend more time investigating how good the workshop actually is, but it's very well reviewed in that community. An example, I originally looked at a mode like Doomfist Parkour, like, why would I like that? You know, what has this got for me? I'm a competitive player. And then I try it, and I'm like, oh, this is this is pretty fun. <laughs> Some of the modes are more mini games rather than full games, but that's fine. And I might go so far as to say that I think we're nearly at the point where that dream scenario 
where the perfect offset rule set takes flight in the community and all of a sudden we have a massively popular sub game within our game that just is an entirely different rule set. It feels like they're pretty close to developing the next auto chess or Dota mod that really picks up momentum. And I think by the time Overwatch 2 does get here, a lot of the new players are going to be pleasantly surprised with the depth that has been built on that foundation. And the last point I wanted to make for the video, a lot of you aren't interested in the Overwatch League at all, but I think you should be to the extent that it messes with the game. The good news is that the Overwatch League is going into its best competitive format ever. And what that hopefully does is minimize the damage it does to the main game. I'm not not a huge fan of the devs having a goats problem and them trying to like buff a reaper and then every competitive player knows that's not going to help but it like destroys most ranked players games that's not good same thing if they over buff genji so that he shows up in a tournament one week not a fan but because the overwatch league tournaments are now set to be on a given patch with a little bit of hero pools mixed in to shake up the meta i'm hoping that the dev team doesn't go too heavy-handed just to force different heroes to be played in the league since they have those tools to kind of mix things up. I was watching Coach Hayes' podcast and Christopher made a really good point about it where previously in the Overwatch League, when it was in the league format where you played a schedule week to week, you had to gamble on learning the optimal meta for the entire season. So if you knew you were going to be in a GOATS meta for an extended period of time, it was really difficult to work on strategies that were going to work this week whereas in the tournament format because you have to win right now you have to take more short-term routes rather than worry about your long-term progression in the meta because if you lose well you don't play in the next round and that's a beautiful thing and frankly what competitive overwatch should have been for years the tournaments last year were bomb and i think this year they'll be great as well but long story short thanks to that teams will be incentivized to try their own strategies if they don't feel like they want to gamble on a long haul meta. It all seems very reasonable. I hope I've laid out that we're in a much better spot than I think a lot of people feel we are. New heroes are great, but I sort of felt we had too many heroes once they added Brig, right? <laughs> then I'm like, let's have less heroes somehow because the strategies are getting out of control. But okay, we're leaving it at 32. That seems manageable. And from a competitive point of view, a lot more reasonable for them to keep a nice equilibrium of competitive balance. The competitive side of the game might feel better for this year prior to Overwatch 2, where they change everything and add a handful of heroes. I mean, that would be really disruptive, right? So from that side of things, get it while you can, because this is our last chance to enjoy the benefits of Overwatch 1.0 before it goes on some big format shift for the sequel. Remember, it helps us out when you click our sponsored links. So to show some really easy support for the channel, head on over to audible.com forward slash your Overwatch. Click the link in the description to get your 30 day free trial of Audible and make sure you use our link or text your Overwatch all one word to 500 500. It helps us out. We appreciate it. Otherwise, that's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. We'll see you guys next time.